All right, so I'm going to do a video for the more on rational, more on rational expressions and equations. Okay, so some of the things, let's first go over some of the things you already mostly know how to do. Okay. So the problems on the front page, problems two through five, two through six, two through six, you've already been tested on this. Okay. All right. So let's just do a couple of these for an example. So like, um, like problem number two, you had negative 24 x to the third, y to the fifth, all divided by six x, y squared. This actually is a problem that comes from both chapter six and chapter four. This was in the section on exponents. So you know how when you're simplifying this, I had you thinking about how there's three x's on top and one x on the bottom. So you kind of think about it like this. And then here there's five y's on top multiplied together. Those are all multiplied together. And then two y's here on the bottom, okay? And so what we wind up seeing that we can do, so we replaced y to the fifth with five y's. y to the second is really two y's. So we can think about how well two of those y's we could cancel out because y over y would equal one. Here's an x over x, which would equal one. And then we can also um, cancel out the common factor from negative 24 and six. 6 goes into 6 once, it goes into negative 24, negative 4 times. So on number 2, once we see what's left, we have 2 x's left, we have 3 y's left, and we have that negative 4. So it becomes negative 4 x to the second, y to the third. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number 3. Okay? All right, on problem number three, this one you basically had on your factoring test. Okay, so here we have two trinomials, it happens to be, and we're being asked to simplify. So let me put that in here. The directions on these is to write it in lowest terms. It means really to simplify, okay? So write in lowest terms really just means to simplify, okay? All right, so those were what we're doing on two and three. All right, so with number three, you the big directions on that was to factor before you cancel, before canceling common factors. Okay, so on top, we have y plus nine, and then y minus two, and then y plus nine times y minus four, just you know the ordinary type of factoring we've been doing. And then you can see how, so we've, we factored each of those. And then you can see how the, oops, how the y plus nine was common on the top and the bottom. So y plus nine over y plus nine would equal one, so I can get rid of that. And I'd have y minus two over y minus four, okay? And then questions four through six get into multiplying and dividing. Well, it turns out multiplying and dividing isn't all that different from simplifying. So number four started out as a division problem. Okay, so you're going to change it to multiplication. And then basically, once you've changed it to multiplication, it turns out to be just like a simplifying problem. So to change it, you're going to keep change it to multiplication, you're going to change and flip is what a lot of people say to remember how to do it, okay? So that's going to become stay, I mean, y squared minus 16, 3y minus 12. We're going to change it to multiplication and then flip the second fraction, okay? So the y squared minus 16 would become y minus 4, y plus 4. In the denominator, the factoring's a little different. See how there's a common factor? So you'd factor out the three and then just have a y minus four left. 
And then over on this side, those are already as factored as they would get. So basically, once you've changed it to multiplication, you just have one big fat fraction, okay? Think of those as just factors, and you can start canceling stuff out. So you can knock out your y minus fours, you can knock out your y plus fours, and then what you have left is the y plus seven all divided by three, okay? And there's your final answer, okay? All right, number five, is already multiplication. All right, so we've just got a whole bunch of things to factor. So let me get it written down and then we'll work on getting it all factored. Okay. So this, this can be a challenge. Chapter six can be a bit of a challenge if you never really got to where you could unfoil, but you can work on it and get better at it. All right, so on number five, it's already multiplication. So what I'm going to work on now is just getting everything factored. So I usually look at all the pieces, and I start with the one that would be the easiest to factor, which is this guy right here, because there's an understood one there. So we learn to factor by just looking for a common factor, but there is not one, and so we're just going to unfoil. So we're going to put a T in each spot. Okay. Then we're going to take the 18 and break it down. And we're thinking about how 18 is a bunch of possibilities, but it's pretty clear that 3 and 6 would need to be it because we're trying to get a 3 in the middle. So I'm going to use 3 and 6. And then you remember how things get foiled, so that's how we, we think about it. This would be 3t. This would be 6t. And if I need a positive, this bigger one needs to be positive. So I'm going to make the 6 positive, the 3 negative, and then notice that gives us the negative we need there, okay? So that one's factored correctly. All right, now once you get that factored, see the 3 and the 6? Sometimes then you'll notice 3s and 6s showing up in other pieces of this, this problem. So now I'm just going to move on and start looking at other, other places, okay? This one right here I might go to. Um, I would try 2t and t, because that, or I know it has to be 2t and t, because those, um, there's nothing else that would equal 2t squared. But with the 9, I don't know whether it's going to be the 1 and the 9, or the 3 and the 3. So I typically try the 3 and the 3 first, and if it doesn't work, I'll go and, and try the 1 and 9. Okay. Now I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking like I did down there, how that's 3t, and that's 6t. But this time I need it to be negative in the middle. So I need that to be negative, the bigger one. Okay, and see how that comes from here. And then this positive. And I do have a negative here like I would need. So that one I double checked and I, that one's done. Now I'm seeing I've got three showing up, 2t plus three and all. So I keep that in the back of my mind as I'm moving around to the other pieces to see if I can you take those hints, okay? So now I got to get these two factored, and there's nothing common, so I'm ready to unfoil. In both of them, I'm going to be using a 3t and a t. Let me start over here. So let me think about 48. A lot goes in 48. Um, a whole lot goes in 48. Okay, I think that's it. And I'm going to try the 6 and the 8. And the reason I'm trying the 6 and the 8 is I saw a 6 down here. Okay, and so I'm wondering if maybe maybe I'm going to have t plus 6 or something here. So that's one of the reasons I'm trying a 6 is because I saw a 6 show up on some of the other problems. It would also be logical for you to think about trying a 3. Okay, but when I put the 6 in, I put it, put it there. So that means the 8 would go there. Then I'm looking and I get an 8t and an 18t. And so that's going to wind up being 10 or there's a way to get 10, okay? I'd have to make this guy negative. So the 8 positive, oops, no, nope, said it wrong. The 8 negative and the 6 positive. So let me double check. Yep, and a negative times a positive would be negative 48. So I got that one factored okay. All right, now I'm going to move over to 3t squared minus 5t minus 8. So I'm going to put in a 3t and a t, okay? 
And then I got to put in an eight and a one. All right, so I see this three T minus eight up here. So I'm kind of thinking about putting the eight here. That gives me eight T and three T, which I can make a five T. I'd need this to be negative. Okay, and this to be positive. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and cancel out what we can. So I'm gonna say T minus three here. And, okay, so I'm looking at all the factored pieces. In fact, before I do the canceling, let me just clean it up. So I factored everything. So in the top left, I have this. Below it, I have that. Over here, I have 3t minus 8 and t plus 6. Over here, I have t minus 3 and t plus 6. Okay. All right, and this is just one big fat fraction, basically. So those would be equal 1. 3t minus 8 over 3t minus 8 would equal 1. t minus 3 over t minus 3 would equal 1. And I think that's everything I can get rid of. So on number 5, my final answer would be what you see left. And you can have more than just one thing left on the top and bottom, okay? Oops, I don't, I can leave the parentheses. I mean, that's okay, but I really don't need them because the fraction bar says that, okay? So normally you'll just put it in like that, but don't be tempted to cancel those T's. You've got this adding going on, so you can't just cancel those T's. All right, so that's number five, okay? So four, five, and six basically feel like simplifying. Once you get it all changed to multiplication, you're just going to factor, and then you're going to look for common factors on the top and bottom. Okay. All right, on number six, I have z squared plus 9z plus 14 over z squared plus 10z plus 16 and then here I have z squared plus 7z. And in the denominator, I have z squared plus 6z minus 16. Okay. Now it's division. So I'm going to do the keep change flip. So this has to go on top. And then the z squared plus 7z down on the bottom. And then this one stays as it was. Okay. And then I personally like to factor above and below my trinomials and all so that I can concentrate and look at what it is I'm trying to do. So notice that there's three of these that are just trinomials with nothing common. So I'm ready to unfoil all of those. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in and unfoil all of these. Okay. And they're all basically the same difficulty. This, these two have all plus signs, so they might be a little bit easier. So I might start there. So when I'm thinking about 16 being 1 and 16 or 4 and 4 or 2 and 8, I'm going to use 2 and 8 because I'm trying to make 10 in the middle. And if I make these both positive, that'll do it. Okay. And I'm just going to go up to the thing above it. If I use a Z and a Z, a 2 and a 7, make them both positive. Okay, then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to use a Z and a Z. Okay, and then I've got a 16. So I'm going to do a 8 and a 2. Positive on the 8, negative on the 2. Okay, and then right here I'm going to take out the Z and I'll have Z plus 7 left. Okay, that bottom one, I think, is probably the one people mess up the most because it's that type where there's something common, so you have to factor out that common factor, okay? So anyway, there's a Z plus 7 on top. See, this is now one big fat fraction with all these factors. There's a Z plus 7 on top, Z plus 7 on the bottom I can cancel out, Z plus 8 on the top and bottom. Here's a Z plus 2 on top, Z plus 2 on the bottom, so that would equal 1. And that looks like everything, because here I have a Z minus 2, and here I have a Z. 
And I can't cancel the Z because of that minus sign. Z is not really a factor. And so that would be my final answer on number six. So questions two through six should seem kind of familiar. It's just a pretty much a reminder about how you do those. Okay. I'm going to do a, another video on the next chunk.